Today I'm going to be reviewing the Sun Surveyor app for Android and iPhone operating systems. It's a very useful app that gives you a variety of options for tracking the trajectory of the sun and moon. Just want to send a shout out to Call Craven Bushcraft, a fellow Canadian YouTuber who dabbles in survival skills in bushcraft. Go check out his channel. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. He has great presentation and he always has something knowledgeable to say. Also, check out the Canadian Prepper Network blog, an excellent resource for Canadian survivalists and preppers. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Sun Surveyor app for Android and iPhone. It's a comprehensive sun and moon celestial tracking system app. It offers a variety of different displays and perspectives, including the augmented reality one that you see here, although that one is only available in the full version, which costs $8.99 at the App Store or the Google Play Store. But there also is a light version that kind of has no frills, and it doesn't give you this augmented reality version which I think is pretty cool so I went and bought the full version I figured I could spend nine bucks on a lot worse things than this so basically what it allows you to do of course is track the trajectory of the sun and I should say that in the light version it still comes with the ephemeris data system and a few other map features but there is no augmented reality function in it so the great thing about this app is that it will work off the grid because it relies on the compass and the gyroscope phone in order to determine what the sun's trajectory is and of course its data tables it has built into the software itself. So it may benefit from GPS when utilizing the map modes and the street view feature which definitely is going to require a data connection and I can attest to its reliability. I've used it for a couple of years now and it has been proved to be a very stable application. I have never had it crash on me. It's just a very clean app. There's no ads on it, of course, in the paid version. There might be in the free version. I can't say whether or not that's the case. So getting into the reasons as to why you might want an app like this, potential uses might be, of course, solar panels. In terms of the placement of solar panels, depending on the seasons that you're in, this could be very useful if you're looking at self-sufficient energy systems. There's definitely a survival aspect to this, knowing where the sun is going to rise and set, and where the moon is going to rise and set, and of course what the phases of the moon are and all that stuff could potentially be very useful information. It's not going to tell you the weather, but nonetheless it will provide you with more information which could be useful. Knowledge is power. Obviously there's some architectural aspects to this, how you're going to build your house, your cabin, your campsite. There's some gardening utility to this. Knowing where the sun is going to rise and set at certain points of the year is definitely useful. And just generally knowing the trajectory of the sun could be a personal interest, educational tool for you and your kids. And I think they also market it as a film and photography location scouting thing. I think that that could be a potentially good use for it. I've never used it for that purpose, but, you know, definitely uh, has potential there. Now, the app claims to compensate for what they call declination, which is the discrepancy between true north and magnetic north. So depending on where you are on Earth and what time it is in the space-time continuum on planet Earth, that's going to determine what the declination is between those two things. So there is declination tables. Uh, I'll post a link to some of those here. Generally speaking, it's going to be accurate within a few degrees. As you can see here, the trajectory as I found are always right. It's just where the sun is on that trajectory. So you can see that in these trajectories, it shows the time of day in those points along the line there. And so that's where the sun's going to be at a certain point in time. And it goes in military time, so 1,600, 1,700 hours, etc. So there is a compass mode, which utilizes the gyroscope, so it is three-dimensional and uh, can be very useful, not only just for determining where the sun is, but for general navigation. But there's definitely a thousand compass apps up there that are 
better looking than this one, so I don't suggest that you get this app just for a compass, because there certainly are better apps for that. 4D compass is one of those that you might want to look into. So you can see the moon being tracked here within uh, a few degrees, which isn't that bad. Play only relying on the phone's compass and the gyroscope within, that's pretty, pretty good. You can see on the bottom, there is that color spectrum, which is sort of representative of the luminosity throughout the day. So the darkest points on that spectrum being the darkest points in the day and the brightest, of course, being the most yellow points. I believe they refer to that as the golden hour. I guess the golden hour represents the brightest, highest point of the sun in the day. Definitely useful data tables there. They refer to the data tables as an ephemeris, which is just a fancy word for a celestial tracking grid. And so they offer you a bunch of different data tables that you'll see here. So you can basically go as far into the future as you want and see when the sun's going to rise and set. And it just provides copious amounts of information about uh, the sun and the moon and the patterns of their trajectories. There is a calibration mode that it uses to calibrate your phone's sensors. And it's a very easy process in which you move the phone in a figure eight configuration several times and then it calibrates it for you. Depending on where you are in the magnetic interference around you, remember that things will affect the compass on your phone, whether it's electronics or other magnetic objects and stuff like that. So if it's not 100% accurate the first time, take a look around you, see if there's anything going on and you know, maybe just uh, move over a few meters and see what happens. So there is a map mode here also. You can go, so you, you're not limited to uh, where you are at any point in time, although this will require a data connection because it's utilizing Google Maps. So keep that in mind that if you're going to use the map mode, you're going to need some sort of data connection as it doesn't store all the maps in the phone software. But definitely useful so you can use it in a fixed mode where you're just going and plotting a point on the map and it's going to give you the trajectories uh, or you can do it in a gyroscopic mode where it again is taking the movement of the phone into consideration so that's kind of neat there's a lot of customization options so the possibilities are endless with that and there's also a street view mode which is in beta which could be useful if you're more of a visual person and you really want to see that, you know, where that trajectory is going to land on the horizon. This could be a useful function for you. Of course, it's only going to be useful in the city. So, and really all it is is the augmented reality on a street view map. So, but definitely, you know, we're checking out, I think, at least get the light version on your phone. It can't hurt to have it. Just another potential app which might give you a bit of an edge when you're out there if you find yourself in a survival situation. All right, thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.